Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mazuki and I'm from Petronas. I think it's a, I'm in a tough spot, right? Because I'm in between you and lunch and I don't think we did quite well uh, in terms of time uh, the whole morning. So why don't we try to do this? Uh, I do have a few slides. I'll try to cover maybe in 10 or 15 minutes. And we'll try to have some questions. Or we can break for early lunch. How does that sound? Will it? Okay. Um, I've been listening the whole morning. Um, I think a lot of the discussion topics relating to the cloud journey and transformation resonates a lot with Petronas' journey both in terms of the cost and the value, in terms of the technical challenges as well as capabilities. And I, I do think that what I'm planning to share today resonates with a lot of you guys here. Um, you might see that I was wearing a hoodie earlier, right? And because this room is extremely cool. But that hoodie is not to promote Petronas new merchandise. <laughs> um, it's, it's actually a special hoodie because actually it's... Uh, to signify our uh, momentous milestone last Christmas when we crossed the 90% workload uh, milestone on, uh, on, the, on cloud, right? Which has actually been a, a, a quite a big milestone for us as part of our cloud transformation. Okay, before, before I start my, my sharing in terms of our digital transformation and cloud journey, I think it's only apt to, show, to share uh, from Petronas' perspective, our Petronas uh, strategy and direction, right? So as a global multinational and national oil company, Petronas was exposed to a number of global as well as geopolitical uh, factors. Obviously, the black swan and the grey rhino events that has happened a few years back, the call for action in terms of energy transition to move to from the high traditional hydrocarbon to green and sustainable energy. And of course, also the recent COVID-19 pandemic, right? So I think Petronas has responded with what we call the moving forward together, MFT. Uh, all in all, there was actually three strategies, which is what we call MFT 50, MFT 30, and MFT 0. But I think what I wanted to elaborate a bit more today is actually the one that directly has a correlation to our cloud transformation which is actually MFT50. Basically, in essence, it's actually how do we improve profitability by an additional 50%. So meaning grow our top line, suppress or, or be more efficient to reduce our cost and increase our profitability. But also in terms of our NZCE, net zero carbon emission commitment, I think we were among the first companies in Malaysia that made the commitment that we will be NZCE uh, zero by 2050, right? So what we have done is actually as part of our digital transformation journey, we have actually adopted the enterprise architecture framework as one of the tools or, or methodology as part of our digital transformation to guide and align our, our transformation against MFT, right? And what we have done is actually we have dissect each of actually the business capabilities that supporting the bigger value chain of actually Petronas. Look at actually each of the business processes that's actually enabling them, whether they are today digitally enabled or there's duplications and whatnot. The business processes, what are the data that's actually required to make those decisions, whether it's actually real time or actually uh, near time the applications that's supporting it, and of course, the infrastructure and technology that's supporting and underlying it, right? So what we have created is actually what we call this traceability, and that which allows us to look from a portfolio perspective in terms of actually prioritizing what are the digital investments that we need to make, because actually resources are actually scarce and limited. Right? So I, I don't know about you guys, our digital and IT landscape is a jungle. It's very complex. Uh, I don't want to go through in detail, but suffice to say, we have a lot of applications. We have a lot of data. Um, and I don't think we are the only, we are alone. Lah. I don't think um, 
uh, we are the only organization that has this complexity in, from our landscape perspective. Just to reflect a bit in terms of the discussion this morning, from an application perspective, we do have a combination of both legacy applications that's not born from cloud, but we do have some that's actually born uh, straight into cloud, as well as actually we do also have a number or a slew of applications that's custom developed in-house, as well as actually products that actually we procure off the shelf, right? So all this mix is actually part of actually our consideration as part of our digital and cloud transformation journey. Right. Again, I, I don't need to share uh, stats about clouds. I'm sure you guys are, are very aware of all this. But I think in hindsight or reflection, when we were looking at it and we thought that actually our issues and problems are actually huge, but when we look at the stats, there are bigger organizations, bigger than Petronas, that has moved more petabytes of data or more applications, thousands of applications to cloud. So that gives us a bit of sense of encouragement lah, <laughs> to, to proceed on this journey. Right? I, I think it was mentioned this morning, I think the, the architecture building blocks and the guiding principles are very important, right? We talked about secure by design earlier. We talked about actually how do we reuse and automate. Uh, we talked about actually building capabilities just now. But I think what's really important and we, what we have learned throughout our journey was actually having the discipline and tenacity to do this and follow these principles many times. In our case, it's more than 800 times because we migrated approximately 800 plus applications to cloud. And doing that with the pressure of the business behind us in terms of actually on speed, on pace, as well as actually having different members within our pods, right? From security, from DevOps, from application teams. Repeating it 800 times is not easy, right? So I think that is actually the key, one of the key ingredients for the successful transformation or journey towards cloud, right? Okay. So as, as other organizations, we started to play around seriously with cloud in the circa of 2018, where we set up a, a, a function called COC to look at actually how we operate in cloud and build our actually landing zone. But in 2019 is where actually we started this program, what we call 20, 20 in 50. 20 in 50 with Microsoft Azure and 20 in 50 with uh, AWS. And what it means is actually we migrated 20 applications within 50 days, right? And this is what we normally call as actually the low-hanging fruits, trying to prove the value in terms of actually the benefits of moving to cloud and also demystify in terms of actually the critics, right? whether they are from the business, the board, or senior management and whatnot, right? But when MFT came and we had the pressure coming down saying that actually how do we improve profitability by 50%, we started the, the journey to cloud really seriously. So we had a 30, 60, 90% uh, percent target in the past three years. So in the first year, we migrated 31% against the 30% percent target. In 2021, uh, December, we migrated 63%. And this includes some of Petronas' critical workloads like SAP, as well as actually some of the core or technical applications, especially in our upstream business to cloud. And as I said earlier, last Christmas, just before Christmas Eve, we, we moved beyond the 90% uh, milestone and we, we reached 91% which is approximately about 820 apps, right? And that's where we are today. But for us, it, it's, the journey doesn't stop there, right? I think we, we heard this morning, and I kind of feel that it resonates with us as well. The, the bill doesn't go down. Actually, it increases, actually, from a TCO perspective. And I think it, in our case, it was expected. Luckily, it wasn't a really big hike. But I think this is where I think the context of having an EA approach is very important. Because now I think we can go back to our business, our stakeholder, and have the, those sessions or discussion in terms of 
having the traceability for each of the capabilities that they want or they currently have, what is actually the cost, the unique cost for it, including the, the cloud charges, right? And business will be able to make a call, for example, in the context of MFT30, trading is important for me, I'm generating millions of in terms of revenue and profit, I want to make, continue to make investments here, but there are certain areas where it's actually just business as usual or maybe keeping the lights on, maybe I just want to turn off the application and totally shut down the, from, from, from a cost perspective, right? But what we are looking at, as, um, starting from actually last year, in the next three years, uh, which is last year, this year, next year, this is what we call this optimization happening. And we see that this can happen in two different contexts, right? The first one is actually from modernization. And I think we talked a lot about legacy applications earlier, right? So we work a lot with our partners, the ISVs that's providing the, the cloud solutions to us in terms of how do we take advantage of actually the cloud technology like the serverless architecture and things like that and modernize their application as well. We work with Microsoft as well as with AWS to incentivize them because they might not be a big company and they may not have an incentive to move to cloud, but to incentivize them to make their applications more cloud ready and obviously, for the applications that we have control, we actually make those changes uh, as part of our modernization uh, process, provided that the business case was positive, right? But the other additional 20% savings that we also see is actually through automation and optimi optimization opportunities. And this is where we look at technologies like FinOps, and we do see from where we started the journey to where we are today, our COC team is actually less than a quarter from a size perspective compared to when we were in on-premise. And we are continuously making the commitment to our senior management that not only that we will not grow our COC team, it will continue to shrink down as we go through this three years journey because we don't need a lot of manpower to man it, but we need more SMEs and experts to just make sure everything is automated and running smoothly, right? But what I think is missing or what we have not shown in this graph is actually from a value generation perspective because we have moved to the cloud, we have the pace and agility to respond to the business needs and that has bode well against the MFT 50 targets, right? In terms of actually um, increasing our profitability, making our business more efficient in terms of actually um, realizing not only from profitability perspective, but up to cash, which is actually collection. And lastly, on this is my last slide. I think it's, this one relates to MFT0, which is actually our NZCE commitment. I think obviously from running our own data center and um, having our own carbon footprint, because we are 90% already in cloud, I think we have seen tremendous reduction in terms of actually our uh, CO2 equivalent, our emission. Uh, I think it's actually approximately 40 to 50% reduction. And I think this number is not static. You guys are also aware that I see the cloud providers in the likes of Azure and AWS have made commitment that they will be NZCE uh, by 2025 or 2030 respectively. And hopefully, I think it's not a lot, in the scale of what uh, Petronas uh, carbon emission is, but I think we, we are seeing that we are doing our part in bringing those numbers down, whether it's directly in this context for scope one or in, indirectly in, into our business and products that we deliver to our customer. I think the other note I wanted to make uh, on this slide just before I finish is actually we are also working with the cloud providers. Uh, today, uh, we're happy to share that actually Petronas is through our subsidiary, we are supplying clean and renewable energy to both Azure as well as uh, AWS data centers. Inshallah, we're going to make some uh, headways with the other CSPs in the likes of GCP and even our, our local data center providers in the likes of TM and NTT really, really soon. Right? I hope I'm, I'm on time, as uh, I promised earlier. <laughs> so... Uh, if there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to take them. All right. Thank you very much.
right. Thank you.